Shein is an online clothing retailer whose popularity started exploding during the pandemic and has only continued to grow from there. Specifically for Gen Z, it has become one of the trendiest topics on the internet over the past few years. Seemingly everyone has been making these haul videos on TikTok and YouTube, more so TikTok, sharing all of the new clothes and accessories that they recently bought from Shein. Now even if you are outside of that demographic, much like myself, I think this topic is still relevant, interesting, and potentially concerning. It it is almost hard to believe that Shein has quickly become one of the biggest fashion retailers in the world, even surpassing Amazon as the most downloaded shopping app in the United States. Their annual sales are estimated to have grown about 10 times larger over the past five years, currently sitting around the $30 billion range. In April of 2022, Shein had a round of funding that valued them at $100 billion, a figure that is almost unheard of for a relatively new privately owned company like this. For context, H&M, one of their main competitors, is valued around $25 billion, so clearly Shein has quickly become a big deal in the industry, which could potentially be an issue given all these controversies and scandals that they have been attached to. It seems like the list never ends, but in this video, I want to highlight some of the bigger ones by grouping them into categories that will hopefully inform you enough to draw your own conclusions about this divisive company that has clearly been taking over the fashion industry. I want I want to start off the list by talking about how mysterious they are. Seriously, that is one of the most common words that headlines use to describe them. Out of all the companies I've covered on this channel, I would say that Shein is the most secretive. I've never seen so much conflicting information. Even the name of the founder and CEO of the company has been unclear. It has been widely reported as Chris Sue, but then corrected to Sky Sue. I don't know, because he's not exactly a public figure. What I can say for for sure is that he started the company in 2008 with three others in China to sell various consumer products to other countries around the world. In 2012, they switched their main focus to selling wedding dresses along with other women's clothing and to reflect that, they came up with the new name She Inside as one long word. Three years later, She Inside was shortened to She In, I guess to make it catchier and more searchable. Since then, they have moved their headquarters to Singapore and started selling to almost every country around the world, but the United States has become their primary market. So now, it is a situation where US consumers order something from Shein over the internet, it is shipped like 7,000 miles across the Pacific Ocean, arrives at your door, and you have no idea how it was made or how it got there. Even if you try to research it, you are not going to find a lot of reliable information about Shein. However, that may be changing. They have been hosting these pop-up stores in select cities to make customers more familiar with the brand, giving them an actual tangible presence, but it's looking like the bigger change will happen with their public stock offering. They have expressed intentions to become a publicly traded company in the United States, seeking a valuation of $90 billion. If that happens, they'll be required to file a prospectus and quarterly financial figures and all this other information that, as of right now, is not really out there. But they have been having issues getting this IPO happening, partially due to some of the other controversies on my list. The main one being allegations of forced labor along with other sketchy labor practices. Through its entire existence, most of Shein's 6,000 suppliers have been in China, meaning that most of the stuff you buy from the website was manufactured within that country, and the conditions at some of those factories have been questionable. In 2021, a report found that a couple of them were violating local labor laws by working too many hours, and then the following year, there was a British documentary that alleged employees at the factory were being paid $20 a day off oftentimes working up to 18 hours a day with only one day off a month. Yeah, they were bad conditions that motivated the band The Rolling Stones to terminate a licensing agreement that they had recently made to feature their logo. Sheehan responded by hiring independent auditors that concluded that most of the allegations were false and then dedicated $15 million to improving their standards. But probably the most concerning of the accusations in this category, and one of the bigger hurdles in getting that IPO, is the area in which they source their cotton. 
Mm. In short, the US has banned the import of goods that are tied to the Xinjiang region of China because of human rights violations against an ethnic group there. Trust me, that is a whole upsetting tangent, but Xi'an has been accused of using cotton from that region. They have denied the allegations, saying that they have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to forced labor, but again, it's become this mysterious suspicion. Maybe the biggest controversy involves Xi'an's impact on the environment. This right here has been an ongoing concern throughout the fast fashion industry. I've already talked about it in past videos I made about other fast fashion retailers like H&M and Forever 21, but in short, fast fashion is all about cheap clothing. You don't pay all that much for it, but it's also not built to last. It creates a lot of waste as consumers throw away their old clothes that have quickly worn out in favor of buying the new style. Do you see what I mean? Well, Shein has taken this to the next level with what has been called ultra fast fashion. They truly do have an efficient operation that enables them to sell new and trendy items considerably faster than most others. They use consumer data to predict new trends, they build strong relationships with Chinese manufacturers so they can get it made quickly, they have a system where they only place small orders initially so that they can gauge the public's interest and then make larger ones if that goes well. That way they're only making stuff that people want to buy. They say that only 2% of their clothing goes unsold, saving on warehouse storage costs and just evidence of an efficient operation. All of this means that they could sell their items at a comparatively lower price, oftentimes just a few dollars, that allows younger TikTok users and whoever else to buy it regularly and make their haul videos, which serves as free promotion, saving on advertising costs. Yeah, they have an effective system. I should say that they do outline some of their environmental efforts on their website, but the quick turnover of cheaply made clothing undeniably produces a lot of waste, along with the packaging used for all these individual shipments. I don't want to speak for her, but my guess is that Mother Nature is not the biggest fan of Shein. Next up on the list, there has been debate surrounding the taxes paid by Shein, specifically the import taxes. The US has a law that essentially makes it easier and cheaper to ship small packages into the country. If a package has a value of less than $800, there are no tariffs that have to be paid and it doesn't have to be inspected. Imagine if Shein were shipping their products to a store in the US, like H&M and many other competitors, well, their shipments would be much larger and almost certainly valued well over $800. But because they ship their items straight to the customer, it would have to be a large order to exceed that $800 limit. Most of them are well under $100. It is a very similar situation over at Timu, and the two of them combine for something like a third of all shipments into the US that qualify for this exemption. They are not necessarily doing anything illegal here, as far as I know, but many people feel that Shein and Timu have become so successful because they exploit the tax law, and that law should be changed. Another big controversy has been their history of copying designs, along with using trademarked or copyrighted material without permission. They have been involved in dozens of lawsuits involving this. Now, you have to remember that fast fashion retailers have to put out a lot of new stuff quick. They have to really keep up with the latest trends, so literally thousands of new items are posted to their website daily. You can see how this would be motivation to quickly imitate an existing design that has already been proven, or at the very least, you could see how something could slip through the cracks if not properly supervised. Sometimes the design has been taken from smaller independent creators, and sometimes it's taken from well-known larger ones. For example, they were accused of copying this sweater from a smaller Nigerian brand. The original company sold it for $330, while the Shein version of it sold for $17. I mean, sure, it's probably not made nearly as well, but that is 95% cheaper, and you just can't compete with that. Larger brands that have accused them of copying include Oakley and Stussy. Most recently, it was the Japanese company Uniqlo that sued Shein for allegedly copying their Mary Poppins carry-all. There was a settlement with the copyright owner of the band Nirvana because Shein used some of their album covers on their shirts without permission. Shein says that they have put together a team to review the products to make sure that it doesn't keep happening like this, but I don't know, it seems to keep happening. Next up, along the same lines of letting items slip through the cracks, how about the sale of offensive items. Yeah, there have been multiple examples of items being sold there that were seen as racist or insensitive that probably should not have been sold there. The most reported example was a swastika necklace that they say was meant to portray a Buddhist swastika, but they quickly took responsibility for the mistake and apologized for doing it. I honestly don't want to spend too much time on this one for obvious reasons, but there are a few other examples, and every time it happens, it stirs up a bunch of controversy in the news, so that's why I felt the need to at least mention it here. 
I'm gonna start going faster here because the rest of these are more straightforward or isolated, so I don't feel the need to go into too much detail. Sheehan has been accused of engaging in anti-competitive practices, doing things that unfairly pull them ahead of the competition. Most notably, there have been back and forth lawsuits between Sheehan and Timu, the most recent one in December of 2023, accusing Sheehan of various shady tactics meant to establish a monopoly over Chinese manufacturers and the US market. That lawsuit uses the phrase mafia-style intimidation of suppliers, saying that they have been threatening to impose penalties if they do business with a rival. Keep in mind that these are accusations from a competitor, but this is a high-profile lawsuit. Going back to the list, a data breach. In 2022, they were fined $1.9 million by New York for failing to properly disclose a data breach that affected 39 million customers. Another one would be safety concerns. In 2021, there was a study by CBC in Canada that found ridiculously high levels of chemicals in certain products that were bought from Shein, including this jacket for toddlers that they say had 20 times the amount of lead that is safe for children. I'm being careful to not dilute my list by picking out every little issue that anyone has ever had with Shein, but I do feel like everything I mentioned here is pretty serious. This is a large company with a global impact that is probably going to become even more relevant as time goes on, so if anything in this video is concerning to you, I recommend you continue to look deeper into it and act accordingly. Or maybe just wait until more information comes out so we can get a fuller picture of Shein. They've been making a lot of waves lately, so my intention here is simply to make you more aware of what has been happening with them and potentially raise some suspicions. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Shein? Are they a harmless company that sells trendy clothing at amazing deals or a mysterious troublemaker that needs to be thoroughly investigated before they can win over your approval? Or potentially somewhere in between. I hope this video came off as objective. I'm truly not trying to persuade you of anything. But at the same time, these are serious controversies that I think you should at least be aware of. So any thoughts you have about Shein or anything else in this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.